Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 9 of the third season of the Savage Lands. Praise Lashes is a wonderful fortress. We have a lot of wonderful things to do today. So I, I really took quite some time between this and the last episode to think about things that I want to see improved or I want to see changed. So I checked out the staircases and connections and all manner of different things. All right, a mysterious construction is in the making. Just checked if the kiddo has everything he needs. She? Hot to tell. Yeah, it's a she. So, the first thing that I want to share with you, I took a look on this box, and when I scrolled upwards, I noticed that this thing has actually a roof. I never really noticed, but we actually do have a roofed off box that simply has only this entrance here. So that means if I'll be putting up a bridge here, which I will now, then we can seal off this fortress hermetically whenever we want to. I like that. So that's one of the first things that I wanted to introduce for today. The other thing here is we're going to remove this wall here and we're going to add in yet another bridge here and I'm going to create an airlock. So during times of peace, only this bridge here will be open and this one will be closed. So basically we can then get the traders in, shut the door behind them and open the door inside to the fortress. And in war times, this would be a way of providing safety. I like that, you know? These are a few smaller things, and now let's check what's uh, going on with the Olm here. Ah, yeah, he's uh, fighting with amphibian people. Those amphibian people, they are really, really something that I find strangely unsettling. Uh, also unsettling is this severe lack of wood here, you know? We, we just don't have any timber, and that's that's something that I will only be able to resolve in, in an intermediate uh, time frame. I do have some ideas. I noticed that Caverns Layer 3 has trees, so I figured that if we'd be just uh, conquering that area, well, that would be just what we could do to get ourselves even more wood. But before we can do that, I certainly want to stock up with defenses because we have uh, crossed the magical 80 people threshold. Praise Lashes has grown tremendously fast. And the this threshold is the number required for being ambushed by sieges and the stuff. So just in case you were wondering. So that's why safety is of, uh, of importance today. I want those Periclase blocks below there. I, I hate bridges without blocks below them. Uh, it's kind of an OCD thing of mine. I, I know it ain't that important. All right. Uh, the schist. That is a rock trap. <laughs> All right. Turns out the giant Ulm had, 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 has had his last stand here. So another thing that I want to implement here is, well, let's put it down like that. I recently noticed that whatever gets killed in the dungeons doesn't really get butchered and processed properly if there is no butcher in the vicinity. So that's what we're going to provide here. So let's check on that artifact before I forget. So Rur Vumum. Blah, nah, I'm not going to pronounce that. So uh, the artwork relates to the killing of the dwarf by the forgotten beast, Bur Ezruberry Caves, the murky and praise lashes. All right. So, turns out I'm not the only one interested in the past of this place. Even the children are are talking about it and uh, bringing up stories. I like that. So, I want to expand also here a couple of things. For example, the stockpile of blocks is uh, a little bit too small by now. There's a lot of things that we got to do here. This fortress has a lot of work, but it's also pretty cool. It's coming uh, together quite nicely. So we're going to go for... Oh, I don't have enough worth of clays yet. We're going to go for that fortification theme. And after that, well, the long-term goal of Praise Lashes is to be is to assert dominance in this area. 
If I'd go and look at this in a political way, the fortress here is the second most, you know, it's one of two very, very northern uh, fortresses. And taking down these guys would be a real big step forward. We might be even subverting some of them. Let me know in the comments how you would see that. I personally think the Shinvistum Dwarfs would be all about um, raising, pillaging, and burning these places, but maybe we should conquer them. What do you think? So, uh, what was this squad called again that runs mornings? Take down the badger. What a fight. Well, always nice to take care of the encaged uh, subjects. Another thing that I want to work with today, or migrants, jeez, is the cistern. Or cistern? I need to look up the pronouns for that. Anywho, so we're going to complete that for today. So here goes what I had in mind. We are going to set up a door here. This ain't complete yet. This ain't complete yet. I figured that there is one thing that's really, really important here, and that's a chamber that can take of uh, excess, well, that can take care of excess water. In case this doesn't make sense yet, it'll do in a moment. Don't worry. So yeah, of course they don't want to dig there because you know there's water up above. It's making them nervous. Don't worry, guys. I know what I'm doing. It's gonna be all fine. This will stay like that until they are no longer below the, the chambers here. Alright, that's uh, Hunter doing his hunting things. Hunters always unnerve me. They uh, constantly create combat messages and... Uh... <laughs> then I lose the, the, uh, the attention for the real deal. So... What's this all about, you might ask yourself. Well, we're going to have it all figured out in a hot minute. This is going to be the dissipation chamber if ever something goes wrong here with our, um, with our cistern, basically. Because, you know, there is a chance that I will have too much water up here for a hole here to carry. And uh, that's when we will have this... Uh, this overflow valve, so to say. So whenever there's too much water here in the chamber, we're just going to flick open the bridge and uh, it'll take up all the excess water. When it comes down to uh, operations with water, I'm a real big fan by now of, of taking control as much as I can. So I hope I didn't, uh, no, I didn't forget any, uh, any mandates, that's good. So, all in all, I have lots of plans, as you might have already noticed. And we're going to improve also on the defenses of this place, because I figured that this is absolutely something that I want to work on as well. So the basic idea is going to be that the uh, guests of us have to go downstairs here, right in front of the fortress, and then we're going to pipe them through a nightmare. And once they're through with a nightmare, they are allowed to enter the fortress, I don't know, somewhere around here. And then we pipe them through no more nightmares until they are finally allowed to enter the fortress. Something like that. Just to make sure that unwanted guests have no easy way of entering the fortress. Whereas uh, wanted guests, we're just going to give, give them an entrance via the trader's depot. That's going to be the basic idea. I like it so far. Let's see how it plays out. There's always two parts of every plan. The plan and the execution. Alright, so we're going to pull that lever because I don't want to have that chamber open as a matter of fact. And as the last thing, we're going to slap in a wall now here because uh, we're pretty much done with that part. So now the water will only pour down from this place. So let's fill that cistern and see how it plays out. I have the slight feeling as it might that it might be too much water, but we'll see. So we forbid both of these, and <laughs> let's have some fun. So this lever is the one that we need to uh, flick. And now, let's watch it go. I love things like these. So here goes that one, and where's that one? 
All right. So we're going to take the entire water um, depot. Splash. Here we go. I love it. Isn't this cool? So here we are refilling our our fresh water resources. Let's see. Nah, we're not even close of, uh, to overfilling this place. But the cool part is the uh, the well here will already work. That's uh, no props at all. Oh, I like this. I like this. So here we have our refillable cistern system. Cistern. <laughs> Whatever. So uh, yeah, it's time to it's time to close the door again. And uh, well, we're we're going to repeat that, and then we'll see if the uh, overflow valve actually does its job as well. So now it's time to collect more water. Isn't this fun? So why is this water buffalo cough down here? It's not supposed to be here. It must be the new uh, migrants, you know. You don't watch them for a hot minute, and uh... damn, I got a zoo here. Ugh. Anyways, so uh, what's it now? All right, the metalsmiths want a, a guild hall. Just when I was uh, trying to get a, to pick up other things that kept me busy, I love it. So let's just make sure. Ah, finally we got the orthoclase blocks. I love how they look. They got such a nice color. It's uh, I'm pretty. Uh, Pretty much in love with these. We also, I also spotted some nice deposit of olivine on the way uh, around here, so we can make some nice uh, green stuff as well. Just need to procure that. The longer I play Dwarf Fortress, the more I become a sucker for stone colors. But uh, you know, it is also pretty cool, admittedly. So um, the orthoclase has this uh, super cool dark red color that. Uh, you know, I think it fits super well into the uh, clay, claystone environment here at all. Anywho, enough about that. So we got a metalsmith's guild hall. I figured that I want to change up my regular um, play style a little bit. And you see, the metalsmiths are all doing their job here. So why not make the guild hall happen here as well, you know? There is no need to always have those guild halls just all clustered up in the in the town center. I figured that this is a thing that I want to change up a bit. It's always good to have pe places where your dwarfs can socialize, you know. Wonderful part about uh, Dwarf Fortress is there's uh, no wrong or right way of playing this game as long as you have. Uh, learned to fulfill the basic needs of your folks. Er? What's the matter with this one? I've never seen something like that. So, uh... What the hell is happening there? The muddy... The, the mudding is gone. So, hey, that's weird. <laughs> Never seen something like that happen. There's no more muddy soil below it. What the hell has happened there? Okay, so we got pigtails, plump helmets, sweet pots, plump helmets, plump helmets, pigtails. So, uh, no more quarry bushes, I see. That's bad. I mean, basically... I'm a little bit concerned about the well-being of the, uh, oh, yeah, look at that. It's not even utilized fully. I can, I'm pretty sure it is because there's uh, no more muddy uh, soil there to work with. So, uh, let's see. Let's see if this uh, re-muddies the soil here. Ah, it looks, uh, it looks pretty much like it. it looks pretty much like it, uh. As if there's immediately... Alright, I never saw something like that. It's always lovely to have these little incidents. Alright. So... 
so probably this uh, was also the reason why my drink production was uh, staggered and slow. I highly think that this might, might have been a thing, you know? Crazy. There's, uh, you know, every time when I think I know this game and uh, the scenarios that can be uh, problematic for your production processes, there's coming up something new around the corner I never saw happening before, and I'm like, huh, yeah, just like that. So we're going to go with turret blocks here. I know turret and turret, but probably not the best looking decision here, but whatever. I'm okay with that. So here's the swarm of builders doing their thing. I mean, we are by now expanding at a uh, tremendous pace. I've never seen a fortress grow that fast. Well, that's why I already expanded those rooms here. You know, I'm always preparing. And uh, let's bring up some uh, some switches for, for the trade depot, shall we? So, simple solutions. We're, we're going to make those... Uh, Levers even up here, why not? Since this is going to be a, a fortress here inside anyways, we might as well start utilizing it. So this bridge though, is one that will be only activated from the town center. Because reasons. Let's put that into the mayor's suite. I like the idea of that. All right. Let's wait until this lever has been finished. Looks like the person is uh, here in charge and coming in. There we go. So link this to that. It's just like uh, this is going to be the most important uh, drawbridge in the fortress, basically. There we go. Once these are also linked, we're then able to make a, uh, to create an airlock around the, uh, trade depot. Probably. Still waiting for those trees. That's one of the biggest problems of this place. We don't have any access to fuel. We're so low on fuel. I got all the materials in the world to make steel, except for charcoal. I mean, we could alleviate that with magma. Sure. That's always an option. And I'm actually considering it the longer this uh, goes, but uh, one thing at a time. So, let's see. We're going to go and pull this one. So, several things. First off, a caravan with wagons can go here. They will dock in here, and as soon as they are docked in here, we're, we are closing this bridge and opening that bridge, and if this would be closed in case of a siege, we could greet those traders and uh, give them a safe entrance there if they are fast. So, what do we have here? A weasel. Cool. Can we actually train those? Assign a trainer to this creature. Aw, oh, come on. I cannot stop it. I need to train that weasel. Let's see. I literally have almost no experience with training animals in this game. Admittedly. But uh, we're, we're going to train that little rascal. I've... Uh... Wait a sec. We can't train it now anymore since it's now no longer caged huh weird so it has to be caged to be trained all right i'm sorry little weasel but you're going to go nowhere oh no i ordered the wrong guys these guys are the surface squad where are they no the other way around oh they're going. It's leg day today. They're uh, they're going to go out of their basement. And splat a little weasel there. So there we go. All right. That reminds me that I had something to do down here. So we're going to go for this place here. 
And we're going to set up a butcher and a tanner here. And this way, there's going to be a quite high chance that whatever dies down here will get processed down here as well. I like the idea of that. So we're going to create a new stockpile here for meat. Pretty important, otherwise the stuff that gets uh, processed down here uh, goes bad and just uh, goes stink. It makes people unhappy. Never a good idea. And we're going to create a door here as well. Okay, there we go. Let's see what we can do for our friends, the metalsmiths. Ah, oh, there we go. Flooring sees some suspensions again. But I'm quite happy that we got ourselves so uh, well, well seated by now. Let's put up the last farm here. Good thing that I noticed that. I have a feeling that this was the culprit in uh, in the question of why my uh, drink production wasn't flourishing. So uh, this is the Metalsmith's Guild Hall. I find it so much more fitting that we got that uh, right next to um, to where the actual metalsmithing is happening. You know. Ugh. Metal Crafter Hall, no. Weaponsmith Hall, no. Metalsmith Hall, here. Would be too much to just sort them at the top of the list. I I know that I'm uh, gr grumpy around that, but uh, there are some little things about this game that are just terribly annoying. It's one of those. Alright, there we go. Culture, my friends. Culture. Be happy. All in all, Praise Lashes Dwarves are pretty happy, except for one. Who's that unhappy dwarf? He's the planter. Okay. Why are you unhappy? Trauma. He experienced trauma once, and that was enough. Uh, she, sorry. I mean, some people are just naturally born grunty. Uh, grumpy. She's bored by reality and would rather disappear utterly and forever into a world of made-up fantasy. She's very greedy. She's a pessimist. So, you know, and she likes to meditate on death. Do we have any uh, questions why this is a very unhappy person? <laughs> uh, worst part is that we got this uh, death and suicide called here in the, in the fortress. That doesn't make it better, I think. All right, let's order the engraver to put some fine work on this. I mean, I consider myself so lucky to have this uh, this woman here, Grandmaster Engraver. You know, Grand Frickin' Master Engraver. She came from uh, all the lands of faith, so she basically migrated from Chinmistum over here to, to do art. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to skip out that little uh, saving break. There we go. So when I watch this art here, you know, this is another one depicting a death in the year 37. So it seems to me as if this place here was uh, the, the downfall of the old praise lashes was in the year 37. And uh, the artwork relates to the tearing off of the dwarf Atir's Atir helmet kindles lower right back tooth. So it turns out the forgotten beast was the local dentist. Who would have thought about that? Foundation of Praise Lashes in the year uh, 27. The Raw Salves. The Singed Corridors. So the Raw Salves are the other civilization here. And gosh darn, they, they are really hell-bent on uh, depicting every single person dying here on the walls. Jeez. <laughs> Slightly unsettling. <laughs> Not the least little bit foreboding, no, no. But uh, considering that they're worshipping a death and suicide god, it's somehow fitting yet again. It normally would be like, boy, how how edgy. But well, here it somehow makes a uh, weird amount of sense. Anywho, so uh, we got the guild hall established all by the power of art. That's, that's the power of having a grandmaster engraver. And I'm um, going to go downstairs and 
we're uh, we're going to set this place here up with statues that I have pilfered downstairs. You know, we got enough things today done that were just uh, organization, defense, and all these things. I'm particularly proud of this solution here. We got this whole place airtight now if we want to. That's pretty good. I'm always happy when my fortress is at a point where I just need to flick one or two switches and the place is uh, sealed off. It's good. That's always good, you know. That's just uh, the best thing uh, you can uh, hope for. So let's set up the the strange statues that we have uh, procured here. You know, there's so many statues of various animals in the in the depths of praise lashes. We haven't uh, procured all the artworks yet, so this gallery here will most likely still be growing. I don't like the I like the idea of it, you know. It's going to be quite a cool thing. What's important though, when you do stuff like that, don't forget to announce it as a meeting area. Because this way now it's a sculpture garden and they will actually go there and uh and, and uh, admire the art, you know. So let's uh, open up the lever for the sake of casualty. And our friends are arriving. So I think the good news about that, let's order some pearl ash or glass later. The good news about all that is, if I remember correctly, these guys were featuring lignite and bituminous coal as soon as I find the writer for stone again. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. We could even order some other metals from these guys. They got um, silver, copper. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. We don't... Uh, you, you not always have that uh, type of luxury there. I mean, for now, we're not going to take that. But, uh, yeah, I should... I shall remember that for the future. So, let's go and do the trade. So, I uh, put up a lot of uh, finished goods in between. So... What kind of exports are banned currently? Export of leather armor is prohibited. So I... I really don't know why the hell this is supposed to be an issue, so we're going to break, get that here. Probably there is some leather armor in the finished good bin, but uh, we're uh, we're actually trading this year for the first time with our um, granite wares that I ordered, or at least I hope so that this will happen. So here we go. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, I ordered here granite rings and granite bracelets in large amounts to to fulfill the economy of this place. There we go. I do like how everything here is getting handled. The speed in which this uh, fortress is doing its things is quite satisfying. And we got a new artifact in the making. Sadly, possession. Possession does mean that there's going to be no uh, brilliant talent after the creation of the artifact in that dwarf. As a matter of fact, it's been outside forces. So, charcoal, lignite, bituminous coal, this is so good. And they also brought us a huge load of wood. Ah, these guys, you know. You can always uh, be sure that your mountain home brothers and sisters are, uh, are out helping you. As a matter of fact, in case you didn't know it yet, these caravans actually do take into account what's in your fortress and what your fortress requires. So if you are completely out of logs, they will bring logs. If you are completely out of food, they will bring food and so on and so forth. If your fortress doesn't need anything, they will always bring food at some point. So more tan hides. I'm going to take these. I'm also buying all manner of different uh, stuffs here because, you know, we can't afford and therefore it's totally okay. 
So I'm going to outro here because, you know, we're going to have to pay with all these items here. And it is a tad bit of a uh, of a longer process and it's not even that uh, exciting. So in a nutshell, we're going to do these tradings behind the camera. So next episode, we're going to continue where we left off. I thank you so, so much for watching. Feel free to drop me your comments down below and we're going to continue right where we left off. And of course, a thumbs up on that episode would be wildly appreciated and consider subscribing. There is uh, no cheaper way of supporting this channel. And if you want to stay updated about the stuff I do, just hit that bell thing. Be so kind. And after that's all being said, I thank you so much for still hanging around. You went with me through the ads and I appreciate. I hope you're having a good, good day and see you all next time.